I'm Chris Bryant, CCIE number 12933, and welcome to today's discussion on cables and some other things that you're going to need for a Cisco home lab. Even if you're not putting together a home lab right now, even if you're just thinking about it, there's some good review information here for your CSENT and CCNA exams as well. So something for everybody in today's video. Once you've got your hardware, or once you're planning on what switches and what routers to buy, once you get it, you suddenly realize you're going to need some cables. And depending on the hardware you have and depending on what you want to do, you need different kinds of cables. And that's what we're going to take a look at here today. And when we talk, for example, about crossover cables, it's not going to be an in-depth discussion about why we call it a crossover cable and what's inside it, that kind of thing. But rather, today we're looking at typical uses in home labs and production networks for each cable type. And we're going to start off with a straight through cable. And the typical use for one of these in a home lab is to connect a router's Ethernet port, its, its AUI port, to a switch port. Now a straight through cable is going to have an RJ45 connector on each end. And when you go to plug it in to the AUI port on a Cisco router, you're going to look at it and say, how am I supposed to plug this into this particular port? Because it's not going to fit. And when I mentioned and other things here in the beginning of the video, that's what I'm referring to with the other things, is something called a transceiver. Most Cisco routers that you're going to use in a home lab are going to have an Ethernet AUI port. And you're not going to be able to connect the end of a straight through cable directly to that. You've got to have an adapter. And a transceiver, it's a device you can hold in the palm of your hand. It's going to snap right into that port on the router. And then on the back of the transceiver, you have a place to plug in the other end of the straight through cable, the RJ45 connector. So again, transceivers, if you've bought cables or you're going to buy cables from someone, say, on eBay or you've got a specific vendor in mind, if they sell cables, they probably sell transceivers. And they don't cost very much either, but you've got to have them to set up your lab. Now crossover cables, a typical use for them, and in your CCNA studies you learn multiple uses for a crossover cable, but typically in your home lab what you're going to do with these is connect your switch ports directly to create trunks. There are some switches out there that will auto adapt, shall we say, if you plug in a straight through cable the ports will dynamically adapt to that and go ahead and allow you to form a trunk over that cable. But I would not depend on that. And also, for your exam, it's good to know multiple uses for a crossover cable. And this is one of those uses to connect your switch ports directly for trunking. You don't have to have multiple switches in your home lab, but it really does help because it helps you get good practice with spanning tree protocol, changing the root bridges, working with ether channels, working with trunking protocols. So again, it's a really good idea in a home lab to have multiple switches and to connect those I would get some crossover cables. Now a rollover cable, here's another little tiny piece of hardware you might need to go along with your rollover cable. Because typically with a rollover cable what you're going to do is connect your PC, whether it be a desktop or whether it be a laptop, to a router's console port. And if you have an access server in your home lab, you definitely need a rollover cable to connect to the access server. If you're not sure what an access server is or you need a configuration, you want to see it in action, check out my other YouTube videos and on my website as well. I'll give you an address for that here at the end. I've got a home lab section. Everything you need to know about an access server is there. Now, you will probably need a USB to serial adapter as well because the rollover cable is not going to be able to connect to any really recent laptop uh, because it's just going to have those other ports on there. You've got to have a USB to serial adapter and again that's something you can find on eBay very quickly. It costs a couple of dollars and just a word of warning here with eBay. I've bought plenty of hardware and plenty of cables on there. I'm not warning you about that but watch your shipping charges because when you buy a cable on eBay 
what some vendors do is cut the price of the cable down really low to get your attention and then all of a sudden it costs you know 20 bucks to get it mailed to you so just be careful about that but again with the rollover cable for a home lab it's really a must because you're going to have to connect to your router's console ports if you have an access server which is even better you'll definitely need a rollover cable to connect to that and again you'll probably need that USB to serial adapter as well Another cable type that you're probably going to run into more in a home lab than in production networks is called a DTE-DCE cable. And the typical use for them in a home lab is to directly connect serial interfaces. Now you can get a separate DTE cable and a separate DCE cable and get a connector and connect them and so forth. That's what we had to do in the ancient times when I started studying Cisco when you know, dinosaur power ran the routers. Uh, now, thankfully, you don't have to do that. You can just buy a DTE-DCE cable. They're a varying length, and you can just pick out the length you need. Again, they're, you can find them on the net just about anywhere. If you're going to have a frame relay switch in your home lab, you're going to have to have some DTE-DCE cables. And again, if you need more information about frame switches, just make sure to check out my other YouTube videos. I've got a very popular set of videos over there that will show you how to configure a frame switch and then how they actually operate. So I hope you've enjoyed taking a look at this quick review of the cable types that you will need for your Cisco home lab. wanted to mention I have plenty of home lab tutorials on my tutorial site at the web page at the website and plenty of sample configurations over there. There's an access server config, a frame relay switch config. Feel free to cut and paste those. And even again, if you're not looking at a home lab right now, I've got over 250 Cisco tutorials there for you as well. Again, if you're looking at a frame switch or an access server and you need a configuration for it, watch my other YouTube videos and then visit the website. I've got configs waiting there for you. Thanks for taking the time to watch today's video. I'm Chris Bryant, CCIE number 12933, and I'll see you on the website.